Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself, Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. Guys, since yesterday there was no video of daily current affairs, therefore I have merged the current affairs of yesterday and today. So today we are going to learn very interesting things as well as very important news which can be asked in your examination. So I hope all of you are ready to learn something. Let's begin. But before that, I hope all of you are aware of this timetable. The students who are watching me for the first time, guys, this is the timetable for the live classes of RBS Avi and Nabar. And this is our mobile application. Okay, and these are the channels through which you can approach us if you have any kind of need for the guidance. Like we have the phone number, we have the mail ID, we have this website, we have discussions.anjitda.in. So, so many forums are there for you. So, don't feel hesitation when you are facing any kind of hindrance in your preparation. You can come to us, you can ask for the guidance and we are here to help you and we will be glad to do that. To do that. Okay, so let's begin with the first question of the day without wasting any time. So, the first question is, which of the following folk dances is nominated by India for inclusion in the UNESCO's intangible cultural heritage list? So here you can see the five options. Now all of these are the folk dances of India. And out of these, Garba guys has been nominated by India. Now remember this thing that it is nominated by India. Like India nominates various wetlands for the Ramsar Convention, uh, various uh, beaches for the blue flag certification. Similarly, India has nominated the Garba folk dance for inclusion into this list of UNESCO. But UNESCO has not given the affirmation of its inclusion. So do remember. Now let's move into the details of this news. As you know that the inclusion has not happened yet. Therefore, there is nothing much regarding this news. But yes, the background of it is very important for you to know. So the very first thing that you should be knowing is that India was elected by UNESCO to become a part of the Intergovernmental Committee of the 2003 Convention for the Safeguarding of Intangible Cultural Heritage. Okay, So this is the uh, committee of which India has now become a member. So do remember this fact first because this has happened in July only. Now second thing is the intangible cultural heritage or the practices of India that are already included into the list. So you can see that there are 14 items out of which Durga Puja is the latest one. Now here two questions would be there in your mind. Firstly, do we need to remember all these 14 items? And secondly, how should you remember all these things? Now I have the question for the first one. Yes, guys, you need to remember all the 14 practices because the list is not very wide. You can expect a question like that which of the following is not among the cultural practices included in the UNESCO's list. If such a question is there in the examination, then you would be in a situation, in a tricky situation. So in order to avoid that, I would recommend you all to remember these 14 items because these are very, uh, I would say, very minute in numbers. And secondly, this constitute your static fact. Now, moving to the question number two, how should you remember? Now, guys, certain facts or certain news are of such nature that we can understand them by making stories out of the news by uh, conceptualizing by visualizing but there are certain news like this like this item where you need to just mug up the fact so here i have no other option other than telling you to learn this by rote okay so here rote learning would help you in remembering this 14 items list okay now let's move on to the next question do teen baar revise karoge to yaad ho jayegi 14 items itni badi items nahi hai Okay. The next question is, where will India's first commercial space situational awareness observatory be set up? So here it will be set up in the Garhwal region of Uttarakhand. Option A is the right answer. Okay. So this observatory will be situated or established by the Gangtara, which is a space startup. So it is a very important news because a space Startup is setting up its observatory. Okay. Now, the purpose of it is to track the objects as small as 10 centimeters in size, which are orbiting the earth. So, this is the basic idea. 
Now you all would be knowing this fact that USA is the country which is leading right now in terms of space situational awareness. That is the awareness of the situation of the space. Okay, the satellites that a country has launched into the space, their protection and the protection of the region on the land from the attack by the enemy from space. Okay, so these all things come under the space situational awareness. Okay. So this observatory is going to observe that only space debris will also be observed. Moving ahead, which state uh, states are operating the digital Lok Adalat? So here you have the five options out of which Rajasthan and Maharashtra are the right answers. Okay, the these two states have launched the digital version of the Lok Adalat. Now here two things are important. First of all. What is Lok Adalat? And secondly, who establishes this Lok Adalat? So, first question is Lok Adalat's guides is basically a grievance redressal mechanism. All the uh, you can say, let me show you the Lok Adalat. So, these are the Lok Adalat. Now, what happened here? The cases which are in their pre litigation stage or which are pending in the court. Basically, the cases which have not entered into the court and the proceedings of which have not started yet, all those cases are resolved in these Lok Adalats. Basically, these Lok Adalats try to resolve the disputes through uh, mediation. So, that is the basic idea, okay? So, that the parties can settle their dispute out of the court itself. So, this is the basic purpose. Now, the second question, who establishes this? So, it is national uh, legal authority national uh, legal services authority which is short formed as nalsa and the cji is the patron and chief of this nalsa national legal services authority so this administers the lok adal now in the last month during the 18th all india legal services authority summit the digital version of lok adalats was launched okay earlier the lok adalats were like these as I have shown you here, okay. So these are the Lok Adalat. Now the digital version of it has been launched. So or the basically the first state which has launched the digital Lok Adalat is Rajasthan. Then Maharashtra has also launched it. Now this is the news of July. Then why are we discussing it now? Because as of now, the lo digital Lok Adalat of the Rajasthan has accorded or basically recorded more than 75 lakh cases and we know that 75 is the most auspicious number as of now for all of us so because of that it was in the news and it is your duty to know the background of the Lok Adalat. So I hope that this is uh, easy for you to understand. Now tell me who is the Lokpal of India as of now? This is your question. The next question is which state is planning to build an education township? in the state to provide high quality um, education to the youth and equip them with a variety of professional skills in the single place. So it is guys Uttar Pradesh. Okay. So like we had in ancient India also we have special towns which were the hubs of education. The same is the idea of Uttar Pradesh government to set up a town which would be the hub of education. Now there would not be a specific town that will be established. No. The basically the educational services, the educational institutions will be improved in Uttar Pradesh. That is the basic idea behind this educational town. Okay. Don't think like they are going to establish another city and that city would be called as the educational town. No. The motive behind launching this education township uh, initiative is to uh, basically improve the quality of the educational services in the state. Okay. So, uh, the basic purpose is to equip the youth with the professional skills at one single place, single entry, multiple exit. This is just the motto, single entry, multiple exit as we have it in the national education policy of 2020, single entry and uh, multiple entry, multiple exit option in the graduation system. So, on that idea, this statement has been taken up. Now, this does not bear any kind of explanation in itself. It is just a motto kind of a thing. You can understand it, okay, in that manner. 
so in the town like we have the quota for iits so similarly a kind of town will be established uh, in uttar pradesh so their accommodation services will be provided to the students and teachers as well next question is rajas uh, recently rajasthan government has established the rajiv gandhi center for advanced technologies identify this uh, correct information in relation to the center so here you have the five options first is it will provide training and certification programs for the it majors second is it will enable incubation of it startups third option is it will facilitate research and development in ai and blockchain fourth is it will provide scholarship to students for entering in iits fifth option is it will facilitate government industry and academia collaboration to for new age technologies okay so technologies is missing from here but technologies was there in the option now what is the right answer the right answer is option a the rajiv gandhi center for advanced technologies is basically going to provide the certification courses and training to the iits and ites students okay so this is the basic idea now here i know you are uh, you are flustered that whenever ma'am says that there is a news or any scheme related to the state you just need to remember the name of the scheme and the state but here i have asked you a statement based question out of the statement so here my friends surprises are always there for you in the examination you need to prepare yourself for such surprises therefore i always emphasize on multi dimensional and integrated approach towards preparation of current affairs not only what is there in front of you uh, but the thing that is not there in front of you the background of the news the other related dimensions of the news all of these you have to prepare okay and i have asked a question out of the concept or the basic uh motive of this center okay so these things i always tell you to prepare okay okay so that is all that's the basic idea of rajiv gandhi center for advanced technologies that is to uh, give the training and create better employment opportunities for the it majors next question is recently central government has given the geographical indication tag to bihar's mithila makhana to help the farmers get maximum price for their produce what is the english name of makhana so this is i would say the most interesting and my favorite question of the day uh, i don't think that you could have imagined a question like this in your current affairs video so yes i have asked you the question out of the english name of makhana that's why i told you that not only the straight forward approach but the multi dimensional integrated approach so what is the english name of makhana so english name of makhana is fox nut very uh, not too weird but a little bit weird name for makhana fox nut now you would be able to remember it i hope so so these are the mithila makhanas from bihar and these makhanas remain in the news for some or the other reason therefore they are very important now the gi tag has also been given to these makhanas your task is to tell me under the under which act does the government give the geographical indication tag to different products this is your next question akshay patra foundation has signed an mou with nutri hub to introduce uh, millets in mid day meals a cup uh, also known as the pm poshan scheme nutri hub is the incubation program of icar indian institute of millets research for encouraging research and development in the field of millets where is the iimr located so guys this iimr is located in hyderabad telangana okay now what has happened akshay patra foundation i hope you all are aware of this fact that this foundation um, basically undertakes the work of mid day meal distribution so it provides the mid day meal uh, in the southern india in bangalore and the associated regions in the schools of bangalore and other regions which are adjacent to bangalore so this is the function of this foundation now it plans to introduce millets into the meal and in order to do that in order to increase the nutritional status of the children this foundation has partnered with nutri hub now what is nutri hub nutri hub is not an organization in itself rather it is a program an incubation program of the uh, your in, um, 
your millets research institution okay indian institute of millets research so both of these organizations akshay patra foundation and indian institute of millet research both of them are going to collaborate they are going to research and develop the uh, millets the in order to increase their uh, nutritional status they have signed an mo now one more important thing is that 2023 is the international year of millets and india uh, indian government was the first to introduce to give this proposal to the un to declare 2023 as the international year of millets okay so do remember this fact and apart from this there is nothing much to actually mug up from this news it's the very conceptual news okay now the next question is i know it's a little bit lengthy question but such questions have also been asked in your rbi examination and uh, i hope you are aware that nabad and sebi follow the same lines okay of the rbi so you need to be prepared from all sides so the question is in august 2022 diversified agri business firm godrej agrovet has signed mous with assam uh, assam manipur and uh, tripura governments for development and promotion of oil palm cultivation under the national mission on edible oils oil palm identify the correct statement in relation to the mission so here you have the four statements and five options so let us first read the statements the national mission on edible oils was launched in 2021 the national mission on edible oils has been allocated a corpus of rupees 10040 crore the national mission on edible oil oil palm aims at raising the oil palm area to 10 lakh hectares by 2025 to 26 to 16 0.7 lakh hectares by FI 30. The scheme lays a special emphasis on the Northeast and Andaman and Nicobar Islands. So, which statement is correct, or which uh, option is correct? So, here, guys, your first, third, and fourth statements are correct. So, here, option D is the correct answer. Why? Because the corpus is rupees eleven thousand zero four zero. crores so it's not 10000 it's 11040 crores moving ahead let's know the news the news is very basic a company has partnered with assam uh, with manipur and tripura governments and now the company is going to get the land acquire the land in these states and their oil palm palm oil uh, cultivation will take place okay so palm trees will be uh cultivated in those areas this is the basic news okay now related to this godrej Ag agrovet you need to know that it is the largest oil palm processor in india okay so this fact is important and it de de uh, work directly with the farmers for the entire crop cycle okay one of the uh, many reasons why do the farmers uh, why are the farmers not able to use natural farming methods or advanced technologies is that when the uh, companies directly come in to contract with the farmers or when any kind of new technology is introduced there is no one available to the farmers to tell them the technology to teach them the new kind of uh, technology or the mechanism okay so this company indirectly works with the farmers tell them how should you cultivate the palm palms how should we maintain the quality of the product and what kind of fertilizers and what is whatever is the input how should you use that so one to one guidance is provided by this company which lacks at majority of the places however the kisan uh, vikas kendras have been established by the government in order to do that work only to train the farmers at the ground level okay so that is the one thing that which this company is doing so it basically enters into contract with the farmers and then it teaches the farmers the techniques and the produce is cultivated according to the quality standards of this company so if this kind of technique is followed across india then our main food products would be very much good in quality now we face this problem of high fertilizers input and high fertilizer content in the fruits itself fruits and vegetables because of which they get rejected in the international market so this is something that is needed at the ground level and if the contract farming uh, uh were to be 
implemented in India, then this problem would have been removed. Okay, coming back to this news, uh, there is nothing much that you need to know. However, do remember that this partnership of these MOUs have been signed under the National Mission on Edible Oils, Oil Palm. Now, this is the information regarding the mission. So, it was launched in 2021. The corpus is 11,040 crores and the land area is expected to rise to 10 lakh hectares, the land under cultivation of palm trees to 16.7 lakh by FY30. So, these are some of the facts related to this mission. Moving ahead. In August 2022, India has secured the third rank in medal tally at the 15th International Olympiad on Astronomy and Astrophysics, which was held in Georgia. Which country is sharing this position with India? So it is guys Singapore, which is sharing this rank with India. Now, what is it? It is basically an Olympiad, a competition in the field of astronomy and astrophysics. So India has, uh, has been ranked at the third position. Iran is at the first position. So do remember these facts and this was the 15th edition of this Olympiad held in Georgia. Now these are the people who have won the medals in the Olympiad. So do remember because there are only five people. First is Raghav Goyal, Sahil Akhtar, Mehul Borat, Malay Kedia and Atharv Nilesh Mahajan. So these are the people, three are the gold winners, two are the silver medalists. These, uh, this information is not very important for you to remember. Now, do remember that Radha Goyal has also won a special medal, okay? A special prize for the best solution to the most challenging theoretical questions. So, no need to remember this much data. Just remember that Radha Goyal won a special prize also, along with the gold medal. Okay, so in International Astronomy Olympiad and Astrophysics is the highest level Olympiad conducted in the field of astronomy and astro physics. The last question is, where has HDFC opened its first all-women branch? So it is guys at Koji Kode in Kerala where this branch has been established. So here this video ends. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching the video.